Uh, last week, AOC returned to work as a bartender in order to support a campaign to raise the federal minimum wage. Uh, she made the claim that any job that pays two thirteen dollars an hour is not a job; it's indentured servitude. She said. Uh, all this comes from uh, Slate in this example, but she also tweeted some of this out, and uh, there were some other sources that covered this. She goes on to say, all labor has dignity, and the way that we give labor dignity is by paying people the respect and the value that they are worth. Um, I think there's a lot going on here in this quote. Um, to, to begin with, I, I think the $2, you know, two thirteen an hour is for tipped employees, not for, you know, regular salary or uh, hourly employees. But even still, 213 is abysmal. I mean, that's, I, I don't think there's any way that you can, you can rationalize that where if you're paying your employees $2 an hour, that you're not a bad business. Uh, that's, it's just, it's not functional. It's not possible. And it leaves them dependent on the whim and the, and the, you know, random happenstance of the customer. Uh, if, if, he, if you have a slow day at work, you don't get paid is basically what it amounts to. Um, and if you have a bad customer who, you know, for whatever reason doesn't leave a tip, now you don't, now you can't pay rent. Now you have to go, sorry, I can't pay this rent because no tip Nick doesn't believe in gratuity. Now, uh, where, where is this at? This is the federal minimum wage. Now, I know here in Iowa, I've never seen a restaurant that pays 213 for their servers. Um, most of the restaurants I've ever worked for or seen or heard of all pay minimum wage um, equivalent to what the dishwasher makes. And then you get tips on top of that. Yeah, that's the way it's always been here. So, yeah. But I do know that there are places, um, you know, I, I, I think it's more common um, in larger areas for some reason like more urban populations well there's more people for them to take advantage of yeah so, and, and i think it's probably because probably for jobs well there's more competition but i think it's also because you're more likely to be guaranteed a steady stream of customers it's more likely that you're going to be able to earn tips um but even still like even if you have customers in and out of the door all day every day if every one of them decides you know Susie, Susie was in kind of a bad mood today and I just, ugh, my service wasn't good enough. She just got gypped all her pay. Like she just lost her ability to pay her bills, to feed her kid, to whatever. And like, maybe she's having a bad day because some bad shit happened in her life. Who knows? And is that, is that reason enough to like literally punish her ability to live? Like, I, I think that's, that's kind of crazy. Um, and I think it, it, uh, it also puts you as the patron in a position where if you don't tip, you're doing more than just being a dick. Yeah. You're, you're actively, it puts you in the position of having to choose to, because you know that part of your tip is only to make up for the inherent inequality in the pay that, that yep. they're making. Whereas it, in Iowa, if I go to a restaurant, the most I'm doing is just being an asshole and reducing the additional amount of money that they're getting on top of the, the minimum wage that they're, that they're already being paid. Which yeah. I'm not saying you should go out and do. I'm, I'm just merely pointing out that it adds an additional dimension of, of moral consideration to, to tipping that I, that I just think ought to be removed. They should be paid well, enough just for waiting tables that they can live. And the gratuity should be a gratuity that I give that that allows you to buy luxury items or additional things because you did such a good job that I gave you this $10 that should it, it should go towards a spa visit or some you know a cool extra toy for the kid or it shouldn't be that you need the tips to buy fucking food yep and and I know we've talked about it in the past um, but my, my previous research had pointed to the fact that Basically, the national average living wage would be about $15 an hour. Um, it ends up being $15.12, if I remember correctly, it's just over $15 an hour. And that's an average. So some places it would be higher, some places it'd be lower. Um, so so the current, what is it, $7.25 is minimum wage? In Iowa? It, um, no, I think that's the federal minimum oh, wage. Oh, that's the federal. Yeah, it's, it's $7.25, and I think Iowa just follows the federal. Um, it's no, I think it's a little still. Um, yeah, I can't remember, but e even if it's eight something, even if they raised it and it's eight something now, it 
that's a, that's still half of what would be needed just for the average individual to work 40 hours a week and pay the cost of living as it were well i um, will jump in again and say i've been seeing places where we live the argument is rampant of well if you if you raise the minimum wage to 15 dollars then a hamburger will be 15 dollars got you i gotcha fucking libtard you just got owned <laughs> with my superior centrist ideology got you literally these are arguments that real people make in life that live in this area and so but now i walmart's offering uh, they're advertising 11 dollars an hour uh i think burger king and a couple other fast food joints that that i frequent i've seen signs where even the businesses now are realizing that you know we gotta we gotta pay people more um and when the industry is raising their their wages without the oversight that means that that the situation is pretty fucking abysmal because businesses do not typically just do things you know what let's just let's let's go ahead and just start paying eleven dollars an hour uh it'll be better for our employees uh we'll make less money but i mean that that doesn't actually really matter that much because it's it's you know we're quite wealthy so let's just pass these these profits that we've had on to our employees and pay eleven dollars an hour you think that happens frequently like the situation has to be pretty shitty for the for the businesses to be the ones that are raising the the wage on minimum you know on minimum wage type jobs you know dishwashing food prep um fast food service places like that so I just don't really understand how you could have a position where you're saying, I don't want the the poorest people, the poorest of the working class, of people who have jobs. Obviously, there's people that don't have jobs. But of people who are working full-time jobs, I don't want the lowest paid people to have their pay increased because I don't know how you come to that position without being a douche. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, I do. How know do you get there? How do you how do you get to the end of that road without being a fucking asshole? There's a lot of people that will say things like, "Oh, well, if you leave, you know, if you leave it up to the free market, the businesses that don't pay enough, they'll just they'll be, you know, they'll go out of business because customers just won't shop there." And it's like, no, no, that's not true at all. Like the free market does not work, and there's all kinds of evidence everywhere because when given the chance businesses take advantage of their customers they take advantage of their employees they underpay they overcharge they cut corners uh, all in the name of lining the owner's pocket with more money well yeah that's what i was kind of i didn't do a very good job but that's what i was trying to point out earlier when i'm saying you know the situation's fucked up when fucking burger king and mcdonald's and shit are advertising that they will pay you 11 dollars an hour when they don't have to in the middle of bumfuck iowa Yep. That's that's the point that I'm making is that's how you know that some shady, unregulated fucking bullshit is going on. Maybe that's unregulated is probably the wrong term, but you, you see what I'm what I'm driving at. Yeah, um, we should have stepped in long ago. And the fact that they are now advertising 11 hour an hour means that the 15 an hour it might even be like a low ball. Uh, maybe yep. it's closer to like 18 an hour. Or, or, or and, and I'll also say like for me you know going back to her her comment here about it's it's basically indentured servitude two dollars and 13 cents an hour is not indentured servitude indentured servants had it better because they oh, at least sure. had a future they had a future to look forward to where they were no longer an indentured servitude and they 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 probably had arrangements made for food and shelter and housing and <laughs> etc yeah Whereas here, your entire existence is dependent upon that $2 an hour. And it's probably not really going to go up unless we force the legislature to, to change it. Well, what, what would you gonna... make if, at, at 15 an hour? So that'd be 600 a week gross. They, uh, right? Roughly it's $26,000 a year. Um, as the statistic I saw is $26,000 a year is about $15 an hour. So. Well, it says, I think, you know, unless I did something wrong, I got 28800 and then if you figure, like, what is it, like, 25% for taxes? All, yeah, something Everything like that. Put, put together, something like that, just randomly. So it's just a little over 20 grand a year. 
And that's what they're saying is, you know, if it's if it turns out to be 21 a year in pocket, that's still that's less than two grand a month for somebody, you know, presumably for somebody's family to live on. And if it's a single mother with two kids, um, I, again, I, I I think that might just be a fucking low ball. I, I still feel like at that at that price point, after you pay rent and after you buy food and pay daycare, that I still don't think that's enough. Yep, and and the the, the messed up thing is, um, the fe- the federal line for poverty is based on these calculations that were um, a family of four with one working adult working 40 hours a week. Uh, and it's it, it just doesn't make any sense anymore. We don't live in that world. We, we, we have to have a, a basic minimum wage. And I don't know if that means raising the minimum wage or if that means a UBI or somehow drastically decreasing the cost of living, but we've said it before. Like it, Well, it 15 an hour minimum wage with a thousand dollar UBI, then you would be talking, you know, it would be 34, 35, whatever it is a year. Um, that would be much more doable. I would, I would make the argument that at that level, you would probably not really be in the, in the poverty area. Like you would be able to not the area of town. I mean, like you would, you wouldn't be in the poverty area of like the chart of, of income in the sense that, at at thirty two thirty three k a year, um, you probably can pay for your food and shelter, and all your bills and whatever, and then you probably have some left over. It might not be much, but you probably have some left over. I would I would think. Uh, oh, for sure. And and I think the other important point to note: people will say like, "Oh, UBI could never work," and then people just won't work. Da da da. That's it's like, that's not true. It, yeah, it's dumb because nobody's going to quit their job for five hundred dollars a month or a thousand dollars a month. Like nobody can afford to quit their job for that amount of money. And I know I know lots of people on disability that would jump at the opportunity to, you know, people who are on programs that would jump at the opportunity to not lose the safety net, but then also be able to make extra money for whatever the case might be. Like maybe if the person was a musician or something, uh, if, if they could buy more instruments or if they had kids, if they could, you know, they wanted to send them on vacation once a year so they might they might pick up a part time job. Uh, doing whatever or people who have advanced degrees who can't find full-time employ could be more flexible about taking part-time or teaching positions or anyone who argues against UBI at some level I have found they're making some kind of a a really gross moral error or they're they're making assumptions about about people that are disingenuine if I'm wrong on that pop into the comments and fucking destroy me. But I haven't heard a good argument against UBI that doesn't come down to like, well, too many people will abuse it. Yeah. Oh, and, if we give think... people money, all they'll do is sit at home. Can you uh, imagine it? Can you imagine what these poor sots will do if we just gave them free money? Oh! Oh, the horror! Yeah, yeah it's it's dumb. And, it, and uh, as a final point for me, the it also highlights there's a there's still a stigmatism against minimum wage work. There's still a stigmatism against flipping burgers or waitressing and people, these, these same people will say, oh, we'll get a real job. Well, okay, that's dumb. But I, what I, what I want to push at here is that I, I, I forget the exact number. So somebody feel free to, you know, fact check it and put it in the comments or what have you. But um, it is a fact that the most common job for people who hold master's and doctoral degrees in archeology span is in the service industry. There's more archaeologists working in the service industries than there are actually doing archaeology. For me, the, the point there is that like I don't this the stigma shouldn't exist because those people aren't, you know, young, dumb high school kids or something that are just doing it for gas money. Like these are fully educated, intelligent people who for one reason or another have to work this job. And that's how they get they get by. It's it's not it's it's high time at the very least we get beyond this ideology of like well it, that's a job for kids. No, screw you. Either UBI, higher minimum wage, uh, a restructuring of, of how we think of uh, you know minimum costs of living and rent and things of that nature. Something must change because it, it's it's beginning. We're at the start of the time where it will no longer be a tenable, feasible solution to just live. In America, we're going to we're going to be in a situation where people will have to cohabitate, will have to have multiple jobs, 
just to buy groceries and pay rent. And that's messed up.